Hey, everybody. Okay, I think it's working. I always want to double check because I'm never sure if I've done it right. <laughs> uh, does it say I'm live? It says I'm live. Yay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope everyone's having a good Friday. So uh, we are going to kick off in a minute with the blogging business planning goal setting workshop. I don't have a good name for it. Um, I don't think that's important. <laughs> so we're going to uh, go through and do a year's worth of business planning and goal setting for your blog. And I don't just believe in like goal setting, like I want to make a million dollars. How are we going to do that? So um, what you're going to need is some post-it notes or a notebook. Um, I recommend having something physically paper. That way we can kind of cross things off, try a couple times. So um, yeah, go grab something quickly. Microsoft Word is fine, but I really think with the manifestation we're going to do, it's good to have a physical representation. Um, hi, everybody. Oh, I see everybody in the chat. I'm glad this is working. <laughs> I was really worried I would muck this up. Um, if you're streaming this on SheKnowsSEO.co and you want to chat with me, come over to YouTube. Um, I will be in the chat. I'll be helping everyone plan their year and do their business planning. We did this last year, and I was re-watching it this morning to be like, okay, did I miss anything? Did I hit on stuff that I should bring up this year. And like, wow, a lot changed in a year. <laughs> so, um, so cool. We had over 400 people sign up to attend last year. I think like 20 people came. <laughs> so that, that's kind of amazing. I think I had 300 people on my list last year when I ran this. So this is really cool. Um, a lot has changed in a year. I say that a lot because it has. Um, and you'll notice a lot changed since maybe yesterday. If you guys saw me on anything yesterday, I dyed my hair in the bathroom sink last night because <laughs> I had a minor mental breakdown. So um, the purple is back, <laughs> but I feel more me. I think purple is where I'm meant to be. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to apologize if I mispronounce anyone's name. Dieter, I think your name is. Maybe I pronounced that wrong. It will remain on my YouTube channel. There will be like the replay will go up. Sometimes it takes a minute after we finish for it to like process and then post. Um, but this will be up for the replay. I just will only be doing like live help for you guys during the live because got other things I have to do after this. Uh, wow, well, we have people from Michigan and Portugal. That's so fun. Love everybody being here. So there is a tiny delay on the chat, I will admit. Um, so, so I'm going to ask questions during this. And if there's dead air, it's because I'm waiting for you guys to hear what I've said and then the chat to load. <laughs> so, okay. I want to make sure everybody is ready to go. So can you let me know, do you guys have post-its or a notebook ready and a pen? Um, just post like ready or I've got it or something. So I know that people are good to go. Um, Obviously, I won't know if someone's scrambling for it, but I'm going to talk a bit too before we get started. So you have a minute to kind of grab it. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is we are going to plan a full year together. So we're going to start with um, what the overarching goal is. Then we're going to break it down month by month. It's exactly the same way I work with my business when I'm getting ready to like figure out what I'm actually going to do each month for step by step what I need to accomplish a goal. Um, it's also what I do just to kind of keep everything organized, I like to do batch work. So we're going to batch basically a year of business planning. And then obviously things will change. Um, if you attended last year, my goal was 250K in the year. And that changed drastically. <laughs> um, we've hit that. We've accomplished that. Uh, the goal grew quite heavily. So we're going to allow for room for it to change, but we're going to plan right now for what our big goal is. And if we hit it, which we really hope we do, obviously, then we extend it. We're also going to set uncomfortable goals. I am not about like, okay, my goal is, I don't know, drink this smoothie. That's not a goal. That's just an action. We want something that's like a little bit like that's not possible. When I said 250K as a goal last year, I didn't think it was possible. Um, and then when my friend was like, no, up it to 500K, I was like, you're insane. You were out of your mind. And that is close to being a reality, which is really cool. So uh, we're going to be a bit uncomfortable, but we're also going to set smart goals. So if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I'll explain it. But we're going to set things that you can actually do. We're not also going to say, I want to make $500 million dollars. If you're making $5 today, we how are we achieving? <laughs> like, that's a lot, especially if you say in a month, whoa, I don't know how to do that. If you can do that, please tell me. That's amazing. I would love to know. Um, but no weird clickbait nonsense because that's unhelpful. <laughs> 
And then we're going to actually break down like the action steps we're going to do to get to those goals. Cause it can be hard if you just say like, okay, I want to make $5,000 a month. How, how are we going to make $5,000 a month? Because it is, it's daunting when you haven't done it before, or when you're putting yourself in that kind of uncomfortable space. So the very first thing we're going to do is get ourselves in the right framework to do this because it is uncomfortable. It's going to be a little bit like a little bit granola y, I guess, because I like manifestation. I love that stuff, even though like I definitely didn't believe in it for a long time. It freaking works. So we're going to take a minute and I want everyone to just think to themselves that like, okay, I need to put this down that way. I have both my hands. <laughs> I want everyone to like, just sit, open yourself up, relax your jaw, take a deep breath. And as you're breathing in, I want you to breathe in success, whatever that means to you picture in your head, what success is. Okay. So just like a really deep breath, let your belly fully expand, feel that you can do this. You are a badass. You are going to make so much money and be so successful because bigger idiots than you have done it. And there's nothing holding you back. You just need to get started. So take another big, deep breath in and breathe in those possibilities and then breathe out all of those like dumb little things that are going through your head that are like, oh, but what if, or, oh, but this is hard. No, get rid of all of that. We do not need that today. Anxiety can come after our hour together. For now, this is a no anxiety zone. Okay. I have enough for all of us. We do not need more anxiety in this situation. So just take another one. We're going to do one more big, deep breath. And then just like, let it all out. Honestly, it always feels so good to do those big, deep breaths. If you've never done pranayama breathing, it's like this hot and cold fire kind of breath situation in yoga that I love. It's super fun. Great YouTube videos on it. Um, and it's very, very easy to take that breath and to kind of breathe in positives, breathe out negatives. Highly recommend. You can find videos on YouTube of it. Um, someone asked, is there a Zoom link or only YouTube? Only YouTube. I'm on Zoom uh, just <laughs> because it's easier for me because um, YouTube it glitches sometimes. And I wanted to have a recording just in case something went wrong. But no, it's only on YouTube. Okay, so now that we are ready and we are good to go, the first thing I want you guys to do is we're going to start figuring out what our main goal for the year is. And you can have more than one, but for this purpose, we're going to pick one that we're working on. And I recommend picking a monetary goal, picking something that is like, I want to accomplish X. And it's good if that's something that's measurable. So for example, sometimes people say like, I want to get into Mediavine. What does that mean? Like, what, what does that mean to you? How is that going to change your life? And typically money is the way that it's going to change your life. That's why people want to get into Mediavine. So I recommend picking like your kind of overarching figure for the end of next year. If your goal is also something like, okay, I want to quit my job and travel the world. Great. but What's going to be that like number that will get you there? So start thinking about some of these ideas, and I'm going to explain how we're going to set a SMART version of that. So SMART goals, it stands for specific, measurable, um, achievable, sorry, I have to remind myself, relevant. I started like forgetting how to spell the word SMART. That was bad. So specific, measurable, achievable, uh, relevant, and time-specific. So that means you're not just going to say, I want to make $500 million. Okay, when? Why? How are we doing that? How much do you have today? And like is that if that's scaling 1%, probably doable in a year. But if that's scaling like 500,000%, probably not going to happen in a month. So what we want are goals that are specific. So that's why it's not just get rich or um be happier or something. We want to know what is the tangible proof that that has happened. We want to know how we'll know that we've hit it. Um then we also want to have a time constraint. So just saying like, I want to make a million dollars. Great. When, when is that going to happen? And I totally get it's uncomfortable to pick a date, pick a time, but it really, really helps. And so the worst thing that's going to happen is you don't hit it. Like nobody died. You didn't like, you didn't, I don't know, turn into the Joker from Batman or something. Hopefully, please don't. I do not advocate that. Um, but you're going to have some sort of situation where you've moved forward. That's the goal. And so we want to dream a little big, just a little uncomfortably big, but we also want to make sure it is realistically achievable to a human being. So if your goal is, I want to live on Mars in a month, 
probably not achievable or realistic. Um, so we want to make sure we're kind of keeping it to earth a little bit. And I think that's hopefully no one's business plan was to move to Mars. That would be a weird business plan um, unless you're like Elon Musk or something. So having that time constraint for us is basically going to be the year. If you want to move it up, you can do a six month goal, but I really recommend having something where we have a few months to work with because it takes time to hit these goals. And if you have goals that are sooner than that, you're like, okay, I want to get into media vine by January. Great. We're working a bit bigger than that. We're doing a business plan. We're not just doing um, one thing that we're doing in like the next month. We need to give ourselves a bit more room and a bit more time. So I want you guys to start thinking about what that is. And then I want you to put it on a post-it. And I love post-its because you can stick it on your laptop. You can put it on your desktop. It is something that you will see every day. So I have mine here. I don't know if it'll be reversed, but it is $1 million from my business. That is my 2024 goal. And I am going to put this, I'm going to actually write two. I'm going to put one on my laptop. It's going to be in front of me every single day. I'm going to put another one behind my desktop or maybe on my desktop. I still have to take it out of the box to be fair. Um, so once I have the desktop set up, probably later today, I will then put this on it as well. And the reason we do that is so that we see our goal every single day. And now this goal feels super daunting. Honestly, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. My, I, as I wrote it down, I was like, I need to, I should take that down a little bit. That's a, that's a bit much. Maybe it's a bit greedy. Maybe like, oh, what if I don't hit it? And I've said it publicly to all of you guys like, oh no, this is so bad. No, it's not <laughs> like you guys are not going to hate me if I don't hit this, because to be honest, some of it's not relevant to you. <laughs> like you kind of don't care how much money I make. So it's OK to set a goal that's a bit out of your reach, something that's a little bit uncomfortable. Now, I am almost at 500K for this year. If I said I want to make 500K next year, that's not going big enough. Now, you want to go higher than what you have. I was at a mastermind with um, ConvertKit earlier this year, and there was Nathan Barry who founded ConvertKit and then Rachel Rogers, who um, has the book, We Should All Be Millionaires. Very good book, highly recommend. Um, and so they were talking about like planning your next couple of years, kind of next five years. And they said, if you are under, um, I think it was if you were under 10 million, your goal has to be 10 times, whatever it is, like whatever your income is today. And I thought that was really cool. I mean, it made me super uncomfortable. I wanted to like itch off my clothes or my skin somehow. I was like, oh no, I don't want to like, that's, it's too much. Ah, but it's not <laughs> like it, it does not need to be that daunting because you've scaled income before you have gotten a job before you've done things before, and we're going to make it really step-by-step -step today. So now that I've given you plenty of time, as I've rambled to write down your one-year goal, I want you to pop it in the chat because it is so important to say it out loud. And sometimes people in our family don't understand. So like, I'll be honest, I was that person. My sister told me, she's like, I want to make a million dollars before I'm 30. And this was a few years ago, back when I made like a thousand dollars a month or so. And I was like, oh no, you're, that's weird. Why are you doing that? That's kind of greedy. Uh, no. Um, but now I'm like, actually, that's my goal. <laughs> so sometimes you need people who understand. And so I want to know what your goal is by the end of the year. And it's going to be end of 2024 or by the end of like, let's say July, I guess. I think that's middle, beginning of July is middle, I guess. So I want to know the end goal, not the average goal, the end goal. Because if your goal is I want $1,000 a month on average, it takes a minute to get there, right? So um, you probably want it to be a little bit higher by the end. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be an affiliate gathering in UK in May with Carl, super excited for that. Um, so you guys should come because I Theo's gonna to come to the UK for the first time. I'm super excited. Okay, 5K a month, 5K, 10K, uh, leave my full-time job with 150K earnings. That's so specific, I love it. Um, 75K from blog, 4,000 pounds, 47K, launch to a two pound a month. That's low. We should have a higher than two pounds. I'm hoping you meant 2K. Um, 4K a month, uh, 100K in 2024, 20K a month. Six, uh, I'm going to stop reading currencies. <laughs> 60K for my blog, 12K in 2024. I love this. Guys, you're dreaming big. I love it. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I hope you also wrote it down. Okay. This is important. Um, one of the reasons I use sticky notes rather than like 
just putting it somewhere else is I can move my laptop with me and it comes with me. We want to be able to look at this every single day. We want to have something that we are staring at <laughs> that way. Anytime we're getting off track or we're doing some nonsense, like, I don't know, I went through like a weird um, Looker Data Studio rabbit hole. I keep going through them. I'm obsessed with Looker Data Studio, which I don't know why it's not fun. Um, and every time I'm like, is this actually furthering my goal? So I found ways to create data studios that will help me, um, but I'm not doing it just to like mess around. Sometimes you can, not always. Now, Karen asked, as a brand new beginner, what's reasonable? That's a great question. So if you've literally started your blog today, I'm going to go from like beginner, 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 like you've never had a blog before. Um, if you started it today, I would say you're not going to make a ton of money. It's just, it's hard, especially right now. Um, the blogging sphere is more competitive than it's been in a while. So I would say that like one to three K a month is pretty reasonable within your first year. And that is a slightly lofty goal, 100%, especially if it is your very first blog. Now, this is going to be 100% dependent on how much time you can put in, things like that. Um, I don't think you'd be able to get into a premium ad network within the first year unless you have like, like tons of time to spend on this. Um, you've taken some courses and you've learned SEO pretty quickly or even like Pinterest or something quickly, but I don't want to be like, okay, you're going to make 100K in your first year. You're not. It takes a while to make money blogging. Uh, but I also believe in setting slightly loftier goals. So saying even like one to three is kind of pushing it for some beginners. I didn't make any money from my blog for like four years. Um, I think it was almost five, actually. It was like cutting into five. Um, so we want to make sure we have an idea of money. Okay, we've got 500K by January 2025. Love it. 300K, 2000, 80K. 1K, 100K, 400K. Love it. We've got so many great things here. This is so good. Okay. So I hope you also feel inspired by all of the people in the chat. And I'm so proud of you guys for saying that because it is hard to say, like it is hard to say your goals out loud. I didn't say that I wanted to be a blogger for like the first three and a half years I blogged. I was like, no, it's just a hobby and I would downplay it. And then I didn't do anything with it because I kept like kind of talking it down. And that's not helpful. We need to talk it up. This is a cool ass career. This is amazing. So we really want to make sure we are hyping it. Okay. So now the next step, now that we have our goal is we want to break down a 12 month kind of, I, I don't know how to say this sub goal, I guess. Um, so if your 12 month goal is I want to make a million dollars because of how we are doing all of this. And because of like the niche that, or pardon me, the industry we're in, it's not going to be every single month you make exactly the same amount of money. If you're working in an office job, you can expect $1,000 a week in your account every week, or I guess paychecks are more bi-weekly. I don't know. It depends. Um, but that's not how this works. First of all, it's cyclical. It's seasonal to some extent. There are ups and downs all the time, but also it's going to grow exponentially. So I basically, with my blog, was like, no money, no money, no money, money, okay? Decent money. Oh my God, money again. It just kind of keeps happening that way. It's like a really drastic uphill roller coaster. Um, and so it is hard to like wait through those smaller times. But what we're going to do when we are making um, our one-year plan with Post-its is we are going to set up 12 Post-its that grow exponentially for all of our goals. So if your goal, like for me, it's a million dollars, I'm going to, I always do really bad mental math. So I'm going to say there's 10 months in the year, which is obviously not true. Um, but then it would be hundred K a month. Now I'm not going to jump to hundred K my very first month. Yes. I've had one before that I've not hit it again. It's hard to hit. I'm about halfway on my best month since. So like got to try again. So what I'm going to do instead is start like, okay, you know what? January is going to be maybe 50K. And then we're going to slowly each month grow to the point where my last month might be 200K because we have to be exponential with it. Now, if you have an existing blog or you have an existing business, you should look for a minute, just zoom out for a second and go look at what your best performing month was. So this can be from ad revenue. It can be from affiliates. What is your best month typically? Because that's where we're going to try and put our biggest earnings. So if January is your goal for like, I don't know, 
100K, that's hard. January is a tough month to make money in because ad revenue is lower. Um, people say affiliates are lower. I had a very high affiliate January last year, so we will see. Um, but we want to be kind of a little bit lower to begin with and then grow up from there. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give you guys a minute. Um, you just need to get post-it notes or your um, notebook out and just start doing month by month what the goal is. And it shouldn't be that every single month is the exact same number because it's very, very hard to hit. Um, we want to kind of keep increasing it. Okay. So when I started this last year, my goal for January was 10K. And I thought that was insane. I thought that was a big goal. Um, I had had 10K months a number of times, but I didn't have any winter content. So I kind of like messed up my affiliates. So from there, I was like, okay. 10K is the goal, and that's going to be ad revenue and affiliate revenue. Um, I didn't really know about sponsored stuff yet, and then I started doing that in January, and it went well. <laughs> um, but then I was like, okay, let's do not – every month is not always going to be 10K. So maybe the next month is 12K, then 14K, then 16, and then it just kind of kept going up. You can just divide whatever your number is by 12 and then try from there. But this is going to be quite personal, guys. And so remember, this is the goal. It should be a bit lofty. <laughs> so it's sure January might have made you $100 last year. Well, if this month you made, I don't know, 1K this month, then we always want to be growing. So we're not going to do, okay, $100 again. We're also not going to do 1K. We're going to go a little bit higher. And we just want to keep scaling it. Okay, so I see some questions while you guys are doing that. Uh, today is my one year blog anniversary. Congrats, Kaylee. Happy anniversary. That's so cool. Um, okay, Nadia asks, what are your goals for just your travel blog, not SEO slash SEO coaching? So it just depends. I, I have a bunch of blogs. So <laughs> for me, um, my travel blog is part of the 1 million that I'm breaking out. Um, so the goal roughly is I would like to hit 200K from just the travel blog. Um, and I'm figuring, out how I'm going to get there. Uh, da, da, da. Is that 200K? Yeah, 200K. Um, but honestly, for the travel blog, my main goals, this is the thing is I'm not doing um, an overarching goal the way that I did last year, where it was like, okay, this blog is going to make this much. I'm instead doing it by the earnings of that blog. So my big goal for um, my main travel blog is actually to do 15K a month in ad revenue. And that's my focus is how it is getting there. And then it I have an affiliate one as well. I have things like that. So it's a bit weird. I've kind of changed it this year where I have my overarching like big goal for my business. And then I'm breaking it down for each um, type of thing. So yeah, if you have multiple income streams and you want to do this for your whole business, the way that I've done it is basically I wrote out my $1 million and then I went, okay, what are all my income streams? And I listed them out. So I had like, literally, I broke it out by every single individual course I sell. I broke it out by every single affiliate I'm in that I actually make money from. Cause I'm in a lot of affiliates that I joined before I knew what an affiliate was. <laughs> um, so like, or what I knew how to like do them properly. I used to just join cause everyone had them. Um, so basically, yeah, let me just show you how I did this. Okay. So let's have course one, course two, ads, affiliate one, affiliate two. So if I wrote out what I have, then what I would write beside it is how much of it, or pardon me, what I'd write beside it is, yeah, how much I need to sell of it if it's a course, or how much I need to earn from it if it's an affiliate to hit my ultimate goal. So if my goal is a million dollars for my business, for me, it's a bit easier with some of my courses where I can go, okay, the course costs this much, therefore I need to sell this many of them. With something like Get Your Guide instead, what I would do is like, okay, I need to make, I don't know, let's say $10,000 a month off of Get Your Guide. How do I do that? How am I going to make that happen? And we're going to do that in a second. We're going to reverse engineer stuff. Um, so you can do it by item. I like to do it by month, mostly for my overarching goal. And that, so then we come to this in a second. So we're jumping ahead a little bit. Um, I like to do year, month, how we get there. That's how we're going to do it. Okay. Um, Victoria, should this be based on when we earn the money or when we get the money in our account? That is totally up to you. Um, I am doing this based on earnings, like when I earn it. Um, but I always, basically, I assume I'm going to make about 80% of my affiliate income rather than a hundred percent because people cancel later and stuff like that. So for me, I always reduce affiliates like times 0.8 kind of to figure out what that total is. 
Um, Josh Band, Nina, if you don't mind me asking, is your 1 million goal from all your sites? Course, yeah, it is. So this is going to be like, that's my business goal, my ultimate business goal. Um, I like to bundle everything together right now because I also have some stuff where it's like, I want to make a certain amount and then sell the site. So I'm building in the amount I want to sell that site for into the total. Nadia, how can we estimate how much money we can make from affiliate ads? We're going to get there. Don't worry. You guys are jumping ahead a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm excited though. I'm glad people want to know how to actually figure this out. And they're not just like, cool, I want to make 5k and then you walk away from this. We need to have a way that we're going to get there. So if everyone can just let me know, do you have your 12 months written out? You can say 12, you can just say yes, whatever you want. But I want to make sure people had time for that. Um, last year I played music, which was fun, but YouTube gets mad at you if you play music that you don't have authorization for. So I don't want to um, have blocked people out from it. So instead of just talking through. And you guys will have the replay for this, so don't worry. You can always come back to it. Um, I like kind of redid it in the summer last year, just that way I could kind of hit it again. Okay, we got some yeses. Okay. Not yet, but keep going. I'm slow. Take your time, honestly. As long as you have have one month, okay? If you don't have a whole month, like the whole year yet, have January. That's going to be our first starting point because then we're going to need to figure out what you're doing to make that number in January, okay? Or to hit that thing, whatever that thing is. Okay, we've got some yeses. So I want to have a few more just that way I know that everybody's kind of on track a bit more. I've got a lot of people here. This is so cool and so exciting. Thank you guys for joining me. Okay, so now we're going to need to figure out how we're getting there. So if 1 million is my goal, and let's say 50K is the January goal, I will put it on a post-it just the same way I did the 100K, and I, my writing is terrible. Don't judge me for my writing. I don't write well. <laughs> we want to have it written somewhere. This is the goal for the month. And I'm going to put this sticky on my laptop as well afterwards. Um, so we just need to, we can basically, it's going to get messy. So I'll probably rewrite it to be fair. So we need to have our goal written down. Now we need to figure out how we're going to hit it. And so that's kind of what people were asking there is um, we need to break down the ways we're going to get to it. And there's a couple different ways to do this. So I'm going to talk through both of them, kind of the two main ones that I do. So, uh, oh, I have a few more questions. Uh, as an absolute beginner, what can you advertise to start with between? Sorry, Yusuf, I don't understand your question. As an absolute beginner, what can you advertise to start with between self-hosted or WordPress? I don't know if you mean ads or if you mean like, should you have self-hosted or WordPress? Can you clarify? I'm sorry. Um, okay, my beautiful passport. What if you started making income partway through the year so you don't know how much winter could make? Totally fair. It's Sometimes it's a guess. Like last year, that was my first winter making money. So I had to guess. I made up numbers. That's okay. Okay, we've got a bunch of, okay, cool. So 50K, <laughs> then we need to figure out what are the ways we're gonna get there. The first option is this method of where you write down each income stream you have and you figure out how much of a course you need to sell, how much you need to make from ads, how much you need to make from affiliates. Um, and so we start with the number. And then we figure out how we're going to get to that number. So for courses, it's easier because you're like, okay, um, my SEO roadmap course is $1,200. So course one equals 1200. Sorry if the table shakes, um, it equals $1,200. Okay. So if I want to make 12 K off of that, I need to sell 10. So that's like, that's not right. Yeah, that's right. 12 mental math makes me panic guys. I'm sorry. I'm really good at math, but it takes me a second. So then I need to sell 12 of that. Okay, cool. Now I have a number. Um, now it's harder for affiliates and ads where you're like, okay, but <laughs> how, like I don't know how much I'm going to get. The ways that we can do this is we reverse engineer the amounts. So if you go into your ad network and you go, okay, um, in Mediavine, I make $20 RPMs. That means that you make $20 per thousand people on your site. So I'm going to bring up my calculator actually and take some of this anxiety off of me. So let's say you want to make $2,000 a month um, off of ads. If you are getting $20 per thousand people, then we need to divide 2,000 by 20. And that gives us 100. 
Now we need to multiply that by a thousand. So what we've done is we've taken our total, divided it by our RPM, and then multiplied it by a thousand because that's how we get the number of people we need on our site on average to make that money. So that would be, you need 100,000 people. Is that right? Yes, you need 100,000 people. I think, oh God, now I'm panicking about mental math again. 20. Yeah, that should be right. Oops. Then for affiliates, the way that we would do it is a little bit different. Um, you're going to kind of reverse engineer it. So with affiliates, the way I do it is I pick my goal. So this is how I had my first 30K month is I was like, hey, I want to make an insane amount of money. Um, and I set a goal of being more about like $10,000 from it. Thank you guys for, <laughs> for confirming I was right. Um, so good, because I was panicked there that I had done something wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah. So for affiliates, the way that I would do it is like, okay, I want to make a thousand dollars from Viator. So I'm going to write this down because it helps me to have it written down. If I want to make a thousand dollars from Viator, I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. So there's a few different ways with, ah, I should open the dictionary rather than the calculator. There we go. So with Viator, I know that the affiliate convert or the affiliate uh, commission is 8%. So I need to make eight sorry, I need to try to figure out how to like, it's hard to like not do it in front of y'all. Um, but basically we need to figure out um, what, how, how much we need to sell so that 8% of it, we get a thousand dollars. And so the ways that we can do this, there's a few different ways. Um, I will typically do this a little bit the other way. I start with finding keywords. So I will find a keyword that has a certain volume. So let's say, okay, this keyword is, um, a thousand people visit it every month. Great. A thousand people are visiting this affiliate keyword. That's pretty good for me, except that's going to be a volume in like key search. So traffic will usually be about 30% of that. So let's say we have 350 people coming to that post every day or every month, Jesus, every day. That'd be great. 350 people coming to that post every single month. Then they're not all going to buy it. But if we know our usual conversion rate, and this will vary by site and by affiliate, if you don't know yours yet, the best way to do it is to do like one to 2%, because that's kind of a low but average rate um, to begin with. So let's say, okay, 1% of these people buy it. So of those 350 people on our site, if 1% purchase the thing, I need to multiply it, then we have three and a half sales a month. So let's just say it's four sales. You did pretty well. You got four sales okay, how much are you going to make off of that thing? So if you have four sales of a product that is $100, you're not making $400. You're going to make 8% of $100. So you're going to make $8. So four times eight is 32 bucks a month. So that's why we want to do high ticket affiliates. We don't want to sell like 10 of a $1 thing. We want to sell more than that. Um, and so this is how I reverse engineer it. And then I will do the math to get it all together. Math is like weirdly what calms me down. It's what I do to like help with panic attacks. So I do a lot of math. <laughs> um, so it's, that's kind of the way that I do it individually. Now for your overall goal of like, Hey, if my goal is a thousand dollars, you need to go out and find a thousand dollars worth of affiliate posts, basically. And this does like assume that you're ranking number one. It also doesn't assume any secondary keywords. It doesn't assume any internal traffic. I make the most money from my affiliates by turning my whole site into a sales funnel. So my best performing post gets like 70, I think it gets 70 page views a month organically. And then, but through internal links, it gets way more. And that's where I make like thousands and thousands of dollars a month off of this one post that y'all wouldn't be able to find very easily because it doesn't even show up when you try to mine my site for keywords, which is kind of nice. Um, but it's because I did it internally in my site. So like search traffic is not the only way we get people to these affiliate posts. It's part of it, but you can actually turn your whole site into a sales funnel and then move people through it to buy stuff. That's more advanced. I talk about that in the SEO roadmap. I'm getting ahead of myself. I just get really excited with this stuff, guys. Sorry. I didn't mean to do a sales pitch. I just really liked it. <laughs> so yeah, basically we need to figure out um, either we reverse engineer it from it costs this much, or sorry, we make this much if we sell it. So we need to sell this many of it, or we reverse engineer it to, okay, I make this much on average from this thing. How much traffic do I need to get to get to hit that level basically? So 
when I had my goal of 10K this year per month from a fil- from ads, which didn't happen because I didn't know about how bad my seasonality would be with ads because I've only had ads for one winter before. <laughs> and last year I was like soaring up so high that then it kind of just stagnated. It didn't like fall any, but I haven't really done any new posts on my site this year. So it hasn't been continually going up the same way. Um, there wasn't like new content to even out the drop, which is what happened last year. So. Um, yeah, I'm not going to hit 10K in ads this year. Would have loved to, didn't per month. Next year, the goal is 15K because now I know to prep for it. Um, and so because of that, I was like, okay, if my, I don't know my RPMs off the top of my head right now, but if I want to make $15,000, I think my RPMs are usually about $35, kind of varies, let's say 35. So then that's 428. So I need 400 and like, let's say 29,000 page views a month to hit that. Okay, now I know that number. Now I know the goal traffic number I need. So now I just need to write posts to get me there. Kind of easy. I know it doesn't sound super easy. With SEO and the work, it gets easier. Um, but that's kind of how we deal with that. Okay, we got a bunch of questions. Uh, oh, Rihanna, do you need me to do the RPM math again? Or I think I went through it twice, but I can't tell if that was during the delay or after the delay. Let me know. Um, oh, as an absolute beginner, oh, sorry, where is, yeah, okay, as an absolute beginner, what can you advise to start with between self-hosted blog or, oh, self-hosted, you have to do self-hosted, um, you can't really monetize a WordPress blog with ads, if it's like one of the free ones, you also need to have um, the ability to put ads on it, like if you want to monetize that way, um, and it's hard to move it over after, so just start with a self-hosted blog. Okay, uh, our conversion rates on Viator range from zero to 12%. What would you make that conversion rate for this math method? So the way that I would look at it then is per type of thing. So if you know from a helicopter tour, you convert at 1%, then any other helicopter tours or tours that are luxury like that are going to have about the same rate. If it's like, okay, um, I know for your site, you do like camping stuff sometimes. So let's say it was like a tent. If you know for tents, it's always 12%. Okay, then um, if you're going to do other camping gear, it's probably closer to that. I prefer to like average down. So when I did like my coaching clients in the summer and like for one client, she wanted to hit 30K a month. And I was like, cool, I'm going to assume that you're going to convert at 1% just in case, just in case um, you'll probably convert higher. Most like people kind of convert three to 5% from what I've seen once they've like established their audience and know what they're doing. Um, some people convert way, way higher, like Jamie IF off the charts conversions, um, indexy as well, very high conversions, but to start, I always prefer to assume the worst. Uh, da, da, da. How about starting a site in a niche where the products are not too expensive, but they generate recurring commissions? Yep, that's fine. You can do it based on recurring commissions. If you know, like this is the same as if you were doing memberships, um, you learn the monthly recurring revenue and then you would build it off of that. So last year I was really into memberships. Um, now I don't like memberships. They're just not for me. Um, it is not my yeah, it's not my zone of genius, not what I enjoy doing. Um, but for a lot of people that works really well. So I know um, Ashley Gets Around has a membership that's like a newsletter membership for uh, cheap business class flights. And I think it's like 127 a year or something like that. And so, okay, if she breaks down, I want to make 500K a year, let's say. 500,000 slash 127. Then she needs to have about 3,950 people in the newsletter. So she just needs to sell that many a year. Now, if it's monthly, then you would be like, okay, like for Liz Wilcox's um, email marketing membership, it's $9 a month. So even, and I'm talking about it as if she owns it, if you're doing the affiliate of it, just know how much of a commission you get. So let's say she wants to make, um, I don't know, again, let's do 500,000 because she has a lot of people in that thing. So 500,000 slash nine. So she needs to have, 55,600 people roughly in it. Um, but if she's going to lower some of that with affiliates, then she needs to kind of ha- make it higher. That way she gets more money. Um, it's all just math, basically. Um, I'm not sure how to know what my RPMs are with She Media. I am not with She Media, so I don't remember. Um, you would need to look in your uh, in your ad network. So I remember I used she media so long ago. I don't remember. I know on the homepage for like Zoic shows it on the homepage with Raptive and Mediavine. You'll see it on the homepage for 
I don't remember if it's for the last 30 days or last 28 days, but it also Raptive always does sessions. So you have to like set it to, um, to page views, but yeah, I, I do RPMs per page view. Cause I prefer to calculate how to get page views. It's easier that way. Uh, da, da, da. Yusuf, how can one learn SEO super fast? Buy an SEO course, honestly, easiest way. Um, there's so many out there, so it depends on your niche and what you're looking for, but tons of great ones. Okay, Michael, I have three different travel blogs that I am in the different stages of growth. Should I ditch the least performing of the third of the three and focus on the others? Also have a dog blog, a managed food blog as well. We have very similar <laughs> portfolios. Um, up to you. I don't know. It, it's going to depend. I don't advise on niches and like which ones to focus on um, because it's very personal. It depends on your experience and how things are going for you and your ability to spend time on those. My big thing for 2024 is offloading as many of my extra sites as possible because I kind of hate having this many. Um, I am not a fan of multiple sites. Not my thing. I know a lot of people love it. Um, I don't want to do it. I like to put my heart and soul into like two sites. And I think that's where I'm going to stay. So that's kind of my goal is to get rid of things. And that's part of like my million dollar goal is like, okay, well in one month, my revenue maybe needs to be 250 K. How do I hit that? Well, if I sell a, a blog for 50 K, then I only have to make 200 K, which still sounds like an insane amount of money in a month. I fully admit that. Um, it makes me uncomfortable saying it. <laughs> oh yeah. People are helping with the she media RPMs. Good. Okay. Um, Miguel, what's the RPM for Google ads? They're very low. I don't know. It's going to depend by site. Um, I don't really recommend, I don't really, I don't recommend personally using ads until you're at Mediavine or Raptive. I think anything below that is not super helpful. Um, they're just very, very low. Now, Chris says, how would you set financial goals if you're starting your travel blog from scratch? You can set traffic goals too. If you don't want to set a financial goal up to you, um, you would, basically just pick a number. The easiest thing to do is pick a number. The worst thing that's going to happen is you don't hit it. It's not going to be that like, it's like squid games and they come after you or something like for, if you move during like the um, red light, green light thing, it's not that bad. So just pick a number. Um, I, I don't know if you were here earlier, but I did say like for a brand new blog, I would do one to three K a month. It is lofty. Both of those, to be honest, typically in the first year, a blog does not make any money. Um, but it will depend on your ability to grow it. It depends on your history. It's just going to depend. So, um, I say aim, this is the thing I aim high for goals, but I calculate low for the way to hit them. <laughs> that way I've over, um, I overcompensate with the work I'm going to do to hit the goal. Okay. We have, uh, okay, I'm going to do a couple more questions and then I'm going to jump into the next step because we have another step of like how to actually hit the 12. That, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the 12 I have here, um, how to hit the 50K for that month. Okay, so uh, da, 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 markets, I'm thinking of entering a rather competitive niche, but to focus on less competitive terms that have buyer intent. Since the products have recurring commissions, I guess I can still earn a lot. Yeah, I make some of like the most money on my site from mid to low level commissions. Like Liz Wilcox's email marketing membership. I'm an affiliate for that with She Knows SEO. And I like, I recommend it because I genuinely think it's the best one. I have been in, I've taken like thousand dollar email marketing courses before that I was like, not worth it. Like just, they're just not. And so hers is $9 a month. I get like $4 every time someone signs up per month. That's not that much money, but I make a couple hundred from it because Number one, it's amazing. Number two, it's recurring. And number three, it's easy to recommend. So you can make a lot off of that. I also think it's a lower barrier to entry where it's like, if someone wants to refer someone to my course, like the SEO roadmap, I know it's a more expensive course because it is like a one and done, everything you need to know about SEO, affiliate marketing, email marketing, business goals, digital products. I put it all in there. Um, it's basically turn yourself into Nina in a course. That's kind of how I sell it. Um, but because of that, it's harder to sell to somebody who's brand new, 100%. It's a lot of money, and I totally get that. I would not have bought it in my first six-month blogging because I had no money, so I couldn't have done it. But $9, more people are willing to invest $9 in a strategy. So it can be an easier, um, easier sell, higher commission. 
Okay. Uh, one more question about RPMs. Do they tend to keep going up each month? I noticed mine have, but I don't know if that's random or a common trend. It depends. Um, so it's going to depend on if you are optimizing more, if you are getting better at connecting with your audience. Now for me, mine vary month on month. So if, actually I think Zoic has like, I don't like them, but they do a good report on this where they have like the average RPMs um, every month of the year. And so typically they go up and down. So Q4, almost always up. Uh, Q1, almost always down. Just because people have already bought all their stuff, people are busy now, they're like not wanting to be on their computers as much. Advertisers have spent all of their money already. Um, all that sort of, there's so much that goes into it. So yeah, I need to have a drink. My mouth is so dry. Also, this, so good. Highly recommend. It's a coconut protein smoothie thingy. Really good. Highly recommend. Okay. Someone said use me as a case study, but I don't know what you're referring to. I don't know what I mentioned where I said case study. So please help me. I have the memory of a goldfish guys. <laughs> um, da, 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 her name again, please. Liz Wilcox. She is so good. I have videos on how I use her membership. If you want to like see the background of how it looks, um, go for it. Okay. They just passed a law where I need to put the cookies pop up. And I understand that people who reject cookies will not be tracked as visitors and for affiliates. I've not heard that about the affiliate part of it. Um, no, I, I use cookies through um, Raptive. So I just follow their pop-ups. Okay, we need to get back on track to the rest of the workshop. Okay, so now <laughs> you've got your year goal somewhere where you're gonna be able to see it every day. Now we've got our January goal. And now, by now, because I've talked for a long time, you should have written out um, some of the ways you're going to hit it. So if you didn't yet, do this now. Um, start breaking down where that money is going to come from. Do you want to make, even if it's 1K, if it's 1K, it can be like all from affiliates, or it could be 500 from sponsors and 500 from affiliate, or it could be 1,000 from ads, 500 from affiliates, 200 from sponsored links, whatever. You just need to start breaking this down so that we have an idea of what's happening. Now, once we have that, what I do from there is now, okay, I need to like try and show all of this at the same time. I'll stick them to my arm. We have our, ah, oh, it's already covered in dog fur, Theo. How did you get dog fur on the table? Ah, there we go. We have kind of our downward stream of how we're gonna do this. <laughs> um, those are not gonna stay on my arm. But basically we go year, month, ways we're going to make it in that month. And then now we're going to write down what actions we're going to take to make that happen. Because it's all fine and dandy to say, okay, I need 400,000 page views or say I need a thousand dollars in affiliate sales, but we actually have to make it happen first. So this is where we're going to start breaking down. Okay. How many posts are we going to write? Are we going to do guest posts? Are we going to send emails? Um, what are we going to put in those emails? And it's where I start kind of, this is the whole thing. I reverse engineer everything. <laughs> now we're going to reverse engineer the actions that we're going to take to be able to, yeah, I should use the wall behind me, Carrie. That's a very good point actually. Oh, well, we're doing it this way now. Um, <laughs> but we're going to reverse engineer the actions we're going to take to make this happen. So if you know that on average, a post on your site, and you can figure this out pretty easily, um, all you have to do is divide the, the traffic you have by the number of posts you have. Um, you can say, okay, on average, a post on my site gets 100 page views per month. Okay, well then if I'm going to have, um, if I need another thousand page views, I need 10 posts. Pretty easy. Now, if you wanna write less posts, you target higher traffic keywords. That might mean you need more backlinks, or it might mean you try to find something that is an easier keyword. So basically you just need to divide that up later. But the way that I do it is I figure out, okay, I need, um, let's say I need an extra 10,000 page views in January to hit my goal for ads. Okay, so I need 10,000 page views. How am I gonna write that many posts? Like how many posts do I think I need to do to get that? And now if I say I need a hundred posts, I don't know that I can do a hundred posts in a month unless I do some weird like, scammy one-click AI sitemap thing, like the whole drama that happened on Twitter recently. I don't want to do that. So either I need to adjust my goal or I need to adjust the way that I am finding posts and the way that I am writing posts, maybe even the way I'm promoting them. So that would be where, okay, do you need an extra traffic source directing to that? Like, do you need to do Pinterest and SEO? Do you need to add Google web stories to hit it? 
Or do you need to just find easier, higher volume keywords that are going to be a bit easier to rank for? I know it all sounds like I'm being very reductionist, but we're kind of trying to be reductionist to get like, get something on the sticky that we're going to do. So when I was doing my like six months to 50K goal, I just picked a random number of posts and it worked. So I kind of got lucky and I guessed at stuff. Now I'm a bit more strategic with it. So if I need um, 10,000 page views in a month, let's say, then I need to write probably 10 posts minimum that'll get about a thousand page views a month. And I can determine that I have a calculator on She Knows SEO, my page view calculators, um, where you can see how much traffic on average you'll get per keyword. But I'm going to say, okay, I'm then probably going to get a third of the traffic of a keyword. So I need to write 10 posts for 10 keywords that each get 3000 page volume. I can't guarantee I'm going to get all of that. So what I like to do is write more posts. So for that case, I'd probably do, okay, I need to do maybe 15 to 20 posts that each get 2000 page views a month or vol volume a month, sorry, not actual page views. It'll probably get closer to a thousand, but it'll take time to rank all of that. So we're approximating things here. I don't want to say that we're going to like guarantee that you're going to get the 10,000, 15,000 page views a month or whatever, um, just by writing this down on a post-it note, you have to do the work after but we want to get a goal. We want to get some sort of idea of what we're doing every month so that we're not just sitting there going, well, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars this month, but I don't know what to do. I don't want anyone to start the month that way. And you can redo this at the end of every month before the next one. We're doing it now so that you can start priming December so that for January, you're ready to go. If your goal is to make a thousand dollars a month every month next year, because you can do that if you want, I prefer like the big end goal then we're going to need to um, figure out how to start that. And since it takes a minute for things to rank, it takes a minute for things to kick off. Right now, I would start writing those posts or building backlinks to like build your authority so you can do better when it's time to start. Okay, so for example, for let's say my goal is 50K for um, January, let me put that on my laptop, um, then Trying to figure out how much in ads, I think. Let's do 5K in ads. I don't know, for Nina out and about. It's how much? I think this month was 3,500 or something. Let's do six. Okay. So if it's 6K for ads, and then I would go and look at last year, how much were my RPMs last year? If I don't know, I'm going to go look at that the Zoic thing and figure out, okay, what is the low one that it typically is in January. And then I'll see um, and try to like reduce mine by a percentage. So I'm just gonna make up a number. Let's just say it's gonna drop to $25 RPMs. So if we have 6,000 slash $25, then that's 240,000 page views that I need. Now I have an email coming to y'all next week about how I broke this site because <laughs> I did, I tested something that I was hopeful about and it did not go well. So I need more traffic to hit that. Um, so because of that, I'd be like, okay, I need X number of traffic. So to do that, I need X number of posts. And that's how we're going to set it up. So it does not need to be um, crazy. Like I want to hit 6K, but you have no idea how to do it. Or you're going to write a hundred posts and throw spaghetti at the wall. We want to have a strategy. So, okay. I've talked a lot now. I was trying to buy you guys time to actually write this down and do it yourself. So I want you guys to tell me what number of posts or like one action that you're going to do next or not next month, I guess. Yeah, it is next month. It's December already in January to hit your January goal. And you can have multiple. I typically do a whole bunch of things I'm going to do um, where I will do like, okay, I'm going to write this many posts. I'm going to do, and, and this many of them are going to be affiliates and blah, blah, blah. And I break it down so that I know exactly what I'm doing and when. So for example, um, I typically, the way that I structure it then once I have like the things that we're doing is I figure out when I'm going to do them in the month. And I like to do five goals a month, five action goals that I'm going to do each month. So then I basically have one thing to do per week. Now, if it's right 20 posts, I might not be able to do that in a week. Now I can, some people can't. So then I'd be like, okay, well, I'll do five posts per week then. But then I still have four other things I'm going to do. Those five posts per week is not one of the five things. It's one thing. Then I'm going to have the next ones that I'm doing. So it can even be like, okay, you're going to send um, an email promo that's going to include a link to your blog post every week um, because you know that on average you get a certain number of clicks from that. 
It could be um, you're going to post on socials about your, like advertise your blog post because you know, again, you get a certain number of clicks from that. We're trying to use any analytic data we have to figure out what we're going for in the next step. Okay. Rajesh asks, what is a feasible best target for a person just starting blogging in 2024 full-time with past experience theoretically and practically? I would still say like one to 3K unless you've hit that before. Um, it's hard to figure out an exact number. You need to kind of approximate based on your past experience and how quickly you can get stuff ranking, but um, it could be more for sure. If you know what you're doing, it can be a bit higher. Okay, get my first affiliate. That's a great goal. Five posts a month, but trying to work out how else to do to monetize my blog. Where I struggle is what to specify. And I've been to 29 countries and how topical relevance is important. What should I focus on? Is that on one site, Chris, or on multiple sites? Marcus, the accountability is the next thing we're going to talk about and how to achieve your goals. You guys are so good. You like know what's happening next. This is great. We're going to go a bit over an hour because I've been answering a lot of questions. So we can go for an hour and a half. You guys are okay with that? Would you let the updates that have affected my site impact what I said is my goal? Yeah, because they happened. So you have to go with like realistically what's happening on your site. Google has changed. So things have changed a little bit. We can't um, live in the world it was last year or something. We have to live in what it is now. Uh, I think Mediavine is 50K, AdThrive is 100K. If you were starting now, would you wait for AdThrive rather than go with Mediavine? No, I still would have gone with Mediavine to start. Um, it's 100K page views with AdThrive, 50K sessions with Mediavine. Now that was about 65K page views for me. So I was still like a couple months off getting into AdThrive, even if I'd kept just going up, but because um, I installed a really bad plugin that messed up my speed, I do not recommend. It's the grow.me by Mediavine. Hate that thing, do not recommend. Some people don't have the issue. That's fine, good for you, enjoy it. For me, it destroyed all my sites and like locked my traffic in. So I didn't hit 100K until like, I think I hit it in March of this year or something. Um, and I got into Mediavine of like May, end of May last year, mid-June, kind of the last year. Um, so it took me almost a year and I wouldn't have wanted to wait an extra year to get in sort of a thing. So I'd go first. But um, I know with Mediavine, when you join, you typically is a 30 day and then you can get out, but it's 60 days when you first join. Um, so you can always switch. I mean, sorry. Uh, I've been reworking a lot of content due to the update, but for reaching January goals, I'm also continuing to write winter content for my destination to build more traffic in January, February. Yeah, target discover then or like web stories or something, because it's going to be hard to rank for SEO on that already. It takes a minute for that. Um, if I'm looking to hit 5k by June, what are some examples of goal numbers I should hit monthly before then? I currently make about 500 to 1000 a month from affiliates and I just added ads. So sorry, is 5K per month by June is the goal or 5K total? No, it must be per month. Okay, so if 5K in June is the goal, then I would do like, okay, 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5, like that. I would literally just do it that way. Um, maybe 1K, 1K, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, aim high. <laughs> um, summer is really high for travel ads usually. So that's gonna be helpful um, depending on the niche, obviously but typically it's pretty high. Um, and then same for affiliates. I find summer is a good time for affiliates. So uh, yeah, I would just keep having it grow exponentially each month that way. And if anyone here sells stuff for Black Friday, typically Black Friday is really big. I had like a goal of 150K this Black Friday. Did not happen. Did not hit that at all. Um, I will be doing a post about it to share the exact numbers I hit. It was still better than like over, I think it was double last year or something. So like better than it was last year. It's not like it was terrible, but it was not what I expected. June to October was my highest. Okay. Then yeah, probably uh, around June, you'll start to hit it then. And maybe even a higher number for the end of the year. Okay. We got four posts. Cool. Okay. Anyone else have what they're doing? What, what are you going to do? One thing that you're going to do in January to hit your goal. One thing does not have to be perfect. You can adjust it later. Just speak it into existence and tell us all what you're going to do. 
So like one thing I'm going to do, it is like I'm doing a content audit. That's a big thing for me. Um, I have been putting it off since January of this year <laughs> and it's caused problems. I need to update posts. Um, I need to go through and check some stuff that my writers did because I hired some freelancers and then I disappeared into the woods for two months. So um, I didn't check them and my editor did and they don't know um they don't know the places as well as I do. So there were a lot of issues that I now have to go and fix. Um, and it's why I prefer just doing it myself with AI. <laughs> but that's me. I know a lot of people like to outsource. I don't, I like to do it myself. So I'm fixing stuff and rearranging things. So that's my big thing for January and actually for December too. Like December, my big goal is to finish my helpful content audit that I've been doing for like, I've been analyzing 500 blogs and I've done a hundred so far, but I haven't done the other 400 because I just keep getting busy with other stuff. So um, that's the goal is to finally fully finish that. <laughs> okay, so we've got write 12 posts, eight new posts, update four. That's great. Updating posts is equally as valid, guys. Uh, finish keyword research so you can start writing articles. Great. Pinterest and web stories, great. Uh, December, organize my content, site structure, topical map, great. Register for affiliate programs, perfect. 10 posts, update five, update five, write five. Awesome, I love this. So we've got a lot of goals here and this is so great. I love that everyone has something actionable now that you're gonna do. So this is where we come on to how do we get ourselves to do it? Because um, it is hard to hold yourself accountable. It is hard to um, do what you've said you're gonna do. Stuff comes up, 100% stuff comes up. And that's why I do recommend like slightly reevaluating a couple of times during the year. But to start, we're going to go off of this. And it's a month, two months away, a month away, kind of, um, to start writing. Sorry, I'm, I'm like seeing the chat come in. It's distracting me. Sorry. So we are going to figure out what we're doing in January now. And we can hold ourselves accountable because it's a month away. You can even start doing it this month if you want to. You don't have to wait for January. I personally think New Year's resolutions are kind of dumb. Just make a resolution and do it whenever you want to. Um, so for me, I'm going to start working on stuff today. I think that's important. So now we need to figure out how we get ourselves to actually do the thing, though. And there's a few different ways that I do this. So number one, like seeing the ultimate goal all the time. Having that in front of you, there's a reason that you want to have it in your face. That year that I wanted to get into Mediavine, I had Mediavine post-it notes. I had it on my laptop. I haven't told anyone this. I had it in my bathroom on the mirror. So I would see it every morning. Now, it was a sticky note, so it kept falling off the mirror. So it was kind of wasteful. I would probably tape it. I wouldn't just like sticky note it to the mirror anymore um, or get like, they sell like erasable markers for a mirror. You can put those on your mirror as well. Um, that's something I've ordered already to put this on my bathroom mirror, but we want to see it every single day. And we want to be able to see it that way we can go, okay, I am messing about on Facebook. Is this moving the needle? Is this something working me towards my goal? And if it's not, stop doing it or find a way to make it help you <laughs> if, if possible. Um, I am very fortunate that for the SEO, like for She Knows SEO, I am able to do kind of fun, random AI stuff and it moves the needle because it's part of my business. But if messing about on Facebook is something you love doing, maybe you need to have a Facebook group for your business. Maybe you need to, uh, if you love Instagram, have an Instagram account as well for your business. I definitely prefer SEO and I will teach that always. I love SEO or well, as long as it exists. And I hope it always exists. I think it will. Um, but I, like, I'm not going to do Instagram. I do not like Instagram. I try to make myself do it once in a while. It's not for me. So it is not my priority. Um, I recommend typically doing like one focus for traffic and then like an extra one kind of on the side, um, until things are moving more smoothly. So sorry, I'm getting a bit off track now. I'm getting excited. <laughs> So basically um, what I wanna do is see this every day. I wanna know um, what my goal is. That way I can make sure that all those steps that I'm doing are relevant to my goal. That's where smart goals come in. So I am also going to, this might've been the one Theo tried to eat. Yeah, I used the, sorry, he tried to eat a post-it note before we started. So there's some teeth marks on this, um, but I'm gonna keep my monthly goal of what I'm doing again in front of me at all times. And I will cross off each thing on my list as I achieve it. So oh, I think that might be the wrong post it note, actually, but whatever. So what I would do with it, um, what I do to hit my goals then is I give myself a treat. I am just like my golden retriever. I am treat motivated. So for me, the way that I hit it is I'm like, okay, every time I cross something off, I get something. You can do this in a number of ways. You can give yourself a day off. 
like, okay, this day I get to do whatever I want. I get to go hiking with my dog and not work. It could be, you go to a nice dinner, you unlock a massage, like gamify it, treat it like a video game. Okay. You complete a quest, you get a reward. I don't play video games. So not really my thing, but I like to gamify stuff. I'll also do this where I'm like, okay, if I have 12 posts, I need to write after I write each post, I get I don't know, a little bit of a nicer dessert. I get to go to the gluten-free bakery and get a cupcake. I get to, I don't know, do whatever I would want to do anyway. And we're not like, I don't know, I don't really believe in the whole, like you have to earn treats. We're just giving ourselves a treat. <laughs> like, it's not like you have to like walk a certain amount of miles to earn it. We just want something to kind of motivate us. So this can also be that you like gift yourself a trip. You're gonna like do a certain thing. It might be something you were probably gonna do anyway, but make sure it is, um, something that you're kind of going to stop yourself from doing if you don't hit this goal. Now you can also um, motivate yourself by working in groups. So co-working, very popular. Um, even just having someone to hold you accountable. So for most of 2023, we kind of fell off <laughs> midway through the year as I started moving around too much. But I had a few friends who we would check in with each other every Monday on Facebook and be like, what are we doing this week to hit our goals? What's happening? What are we achieving? How are we going to achieve it? And it was just a few blogging friends and we all did our own thing. We were not like holding a gun to each other's head being like, you have to finish this thing. No, we weren't. But just saying like, okay, I need to work on something this week that is beneficial. I would figure out what that thing is. You can do this in a Facebook group. You can do this with friends on Zoom. You can do whatever you want. Um, I have my free Facebook group. You guys can go into it post for an accountability group and gather a few people and then hold each other accountable. I do think it's helpful if it's someone who's kind of like around the level you're at, that way you're not um, panicking when they do, I don't know, maybe someone else is like, yeah, I want to do 50 posts a month. And you're like, I just want to do one. That's okay. For a long time, I could only handle one post a month. You'll get better. You'll, you'll speed it up. Don't worry. So you can post in my free Facebook group if you want, uh, get people to work with you every month that you're gonna have a check-in, monthly, weekly, whatever you want. Um, you can also just post it publicly. I know so many people who will post on their Instagram stories or on their Facebook wall or something and be like, this week, doing these things. This month, my goal is X. Did I hit it? Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes just saying it publicly helps. So like I said, my goal for Black Friday was 150K in product sales. Didn't hit it. Kind of sucked to be like, eh, didn't happen, clearly wasn't happening after like the first week or two. Um, but I still said it out loud. And so I did the things to set it up to hit that goal. I prefer to speak it out and then try to make it happen. <laughs> like, it's almost like, okay, if I say, yeah, I'm gonna like become a professional ballerina. Well, now I have to do it. Like I have to figure out how to make that happen. So that can be really helpful. Those are just my methods though. I mean, you'll figure out what works for you. I work in a batch system. So I've figured out um, how to like bulk group what I'm doing to make sure that I am working the most efficiently for myself. I take lots of time off when I need to. I've been very chronically ill this year where like most days I am just lying in bed crying because things are not great. And so I don't get a lot done. Like everyone keeps telling me you're getting so much stuff done. My to-do list doesn't move. Like it is... I'll cross off one thing, but then the rest is all still there and it's huge. So it's, yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> um, I have not done as much as I would like to do and I do what I can. And I focus on the things that are most important based on my energy. I find the time of day that I work best. I find the situations where I work best. And then I just work with it, figure out what timing helps you. There are certain times a day, people are just like more able to focus. I focus best when it is dark. I just, I like being in like a cocoon basically. So I work really well in the evenings. I hate working in the evenings. So I am trying to like shift myself to be a more of a morning person for work. I used to be. And so I've gotten some blackout curtains for my office so I can make it a little bit cozier for myself. Um, for some people it is like, okay, you need to be warm all the time while you work, get a heated blanket. Best thing I've ever bought using it right now, Costco. So good. Um, like so many things you can do just to make yourself more efficient in your environment. Um, but yeah, I find for me, honestly, the way that I will accomplish my task the most is number one, getting to cross them off a list. Also just seeing them every day. It helps to be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Um, but then crossing them off a list is like a good little dopamine rush for me. And then knowing, okay, if I do all these things, 
I get to have something. I get to, I used to do it where I would give myself a chocolate chip every time I finished a paragraph of a blog post. Um, I just finished a 47 page blog post for you guys. That's an SEO dictionary. That would have been too many chocolate chips. I would have gone into a hypoglycemic shock or something. So had to pare it down a little bit, but having something like that, where it's like, Hey, I don't get my second cup of coffee until I finish this thing. Or I don't, I don't know, get to leave work early until I finish this thing. Another thing that works well for me is just saying like, I only have to do this today. So if I only want to work an hour in a day. And I know this is harder if you have a full-time job, obviously you have to like do the full-time job. But if I'm like, okay, I could muck about on Facebook for six hours and then do it, or I could just do it and then be done. That's a lot easier for me. So that's why I have like the five things that I'm going to do each month. Cause it's kind of like one thing a week almost. And then sometimes there's the fifth week, sometimes not, but usually that's a thing that I could kind of mix into another week. So I then am able to work a little bit less if I want to. Um, I disassociate with work and I use work to like not deal with my problems. So I work a bit more <laughs> probably, but it depends on the person um, and what you prefer. So those are some of the ways that I make sure I'm accomplishing these goals because I don't want to look at the end of the year at like my $1 million sticky. I'd make sure I had the right one and then be like, I didn't do anything towards that. In fact, I actively thwarted it at every stage. Like, I don't want to have that. So I want to know, okay, this is my goal. Here's what I'm going to do or what I need each month to kind of hit it. And some months will be better than others. I never thought I'd have, I'd have a hundred K month this summer. Like that never occurred to me. I, my initial goal was that hundred K might be black Friday. And that was like insane for me to say, I was, I was like, no, this is never going to happen. Um, really cool that I got to hit it. That was really amazing. And like, I'm still in shock from it, to be honest. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So then from there, it's like, okay, my monthly goals. Now, what do I need to do each month to hit them? And then I kind of already have an agenda each month done and it isn't overarching agenda. Like it is going to be like write 12 posts, four affiliates, eight informational or whatever. Um, I'm not breaking down how long those posts are. I'm not breaking down like the task of adding affiliate links or anything like that's for you to figure out. I like an overarching schedule. Um, someone asked me recently how I balance like client work and other stuff. I don't balance things. <laughs> I look at it from like my five things and then I just go from there. Um, clients obviously come first, but I don't do a lot of client work. So I'm closing down a lot of my one-to-one -one stuff because I really love working on the blogs and I haven't gotten to do a lot of that this year. So yeah, some things are changing next year, just so y'all know, but you can figure that out for yourself in your business and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, and yeah, adjust it from there. Now, this is also a revenue goal, but you can make it a profit goal. And if that's the case, then you need to deduct whatever amount you're going to have to spend on things to get there. So if my goal is a million dollars, but I'm okay profiting 10K, then I could spend so much money to hit that. Now, I don't want to do that. So in my head, I've set what my profit margin should be. And to be fair, I haven't said it yet, so I need to do that. Um, but then I'm like, okay, my goal is a million dollars in the year. I don't want to spend a million dollars to hit that. I don't want to spend $2 million to hit that and then be a million dollars in debt. I want to have um, kind of this much that's all profit. You could also say, I want the full million to be profit. That's fair. That's amazing. Please, if you do that, that's so great. And I'm super excited for you guys. Um, but we just need to have a clear goal. And that's also why. I say from my business. So that comes from Denise Duffield Thomas's Get Rich Lucky Bitch book, which is so good. Highly recommend you do it. Um, and you like read the book. But she says like, be clear about where the money is coming from. I don't want to be like, okay, a million dollars in 2024, but then I get it from a slip and fall accident. And then like my neck is messed up. That's not what I want. I want this to clearly be from my business. That's the important part to me. So we just need to be very, very clear about this. And that's also why I had you guys break down where each of your income streams come from. So like when I did that uh, mastermind with ConvertKit and Rachel Rogers, um, they were like, okay, hey, 10 times your income. So I was like, cool, $5 million in the next five years. Ah. Um, and then from there, it was like, what are your revenue streams? How are you going to hit it? And if your current revenue streams can't do that, what can you add or what can you scale to hit it? And then from there, we worked backwards and we were like, hey, do we need to hire people to do any of this? How much are we paying them to do that? How much are we allocating? It was a really cool seminar. It was really, really fun. I was very, 
um, I had big imposter syndrome being in that room with all those people. Cause I was like in ripped jeans with my service dog. Like I thought this was an informal blogger meetup. What just happened? <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it was a good time, but it's all just planning and working backwards. Um, make a, a date with yourself to do this. So there's another woman on uh, Instagram who does money dates. Her name is Tori Dunlap. She runs her first 100K. Amazing. Highly recommend her as well. Um, and from that, she says, like, make a money date with yourself, like every quarter or with your partner and go through your money. But for this, it's a business date. So sit down and go through your business plan for the year, for the quarter, for whatever. You need to have a plan. Otherwise, like, yeah, people get lucky and they trip up and just get successful, but there's always some level of planning that probably is happening in the background. And we want to do that planning. It is hard work to become a millionaire, to do all those things, but it's not as hard as it seems sometimes. And as soon as you start making money and you start scaling that money, it's like, oh, okay, this can keep happening to some extent. Obviously, sometimes new things need to come in, but it can be done. Bigger dummies than you have done it. Kylie Jenner owns like one of the biggest billion dollar companies in the world. Not, not that I'm saying she's, I don't know her. So I don't know anything about her, but a lot of us work a lot harder than that. So we can do it too. Okay. I'm going to get to the comments now. If you guys have any questions about any of this or business stuff or your blog, we got another 15 minutes and I will answer all the questions and feel free if you want to as well, post like what your overall goal is and the breakdown of it. Um, if you guys want to be held accountable a little bit more, post in my Facebook group, free Facebook group, um, post your sticky note on Instagram and tag me, whatever you want. Um, I want to see your goals. I'm not going to like email you in a week and then like yell at you about it or something, or even in a year, you're going to have to hold yourself a bit more accountable, but post those goals in my, um, in my free Facebook group as well. I ask, I'm like, what are your goals? What are you doing next month? All those things. And I'm asking that, that way you guys can plan and think ahead. And I've seen a lot of people who post in it regularly, keep growing. This works. It works to have goals. It works to pay attention to them, work towards them, to speak them into existence. Manifestation felt really dumb to me, but um, then it worked. And I was like, damn it, <laughs> like, I'm going to have to actually enjoy this thing. And it does. It works very, very well. Um, I have a whole list of money mindset books on Gino's SEO. I think it's one of the top six posts or something. It's like in like the recent area. So you can find all of my favorite books on money mindset and manifestation. Okay. So let's go through. I need to find where we ended. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay. Do you teach how to write posts, how, how to best write posts in your SEO roadmap? Yes, I teach literally everything I know about SEO. Um, my AI offerings are separate, but all of my SEO and business and all that stuff is in there. And they get like a sprinkling of AI too. It's just not, I want to keep it a little bit different. Four backlinks via guest posts or question MSN question. Oh, that's your goal. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> uh, increase web stories. Um Hey, Kaylee asks, how many backlinks is normally needed per post? It will very much depend on the post. Um, I did, I don't remember where I posted about this recently. I think in my free Facebook group, it might've been an email. I'm behind on converting emails to blog posts, so they'll happen eventually. Um, but the way to figure it out is in key search, take the top three competitors and put them into the backlink analyzer and filter for, for do follow backlinks and see how many they have. That's a good estimate but they should be around your DA for that to be similar. If it's like a DA 70 and they have one, but you're coming in at a DA one, you're going to need more backlinks. So when you're first starting, I do recommend like a backlink per post, basically. How to do deep work. I don't know what deep work is. What is deep work? This is a thing. There's a lot of like business books that are like, okay, um, I don't know do this or do that, or here's this special term. I don't know any of that. Batching is like the only term I kind of know. And it's because someone told me that's what I was doing. I, I don't subscribe to that stuff. I just figure out what works for me. And then I just do it. That's it. <laughs> I'm kind of a chaotic neutral over here, but if it works, I do it. Uh, whiteboard markers on the mirror work, work. Perfect. I don't have those either to be fair. Um, yeah. I don't know. You, you got to, someone said, every time I cross something off, I get something. This is smart. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. It's like when I was training my dog to do stuff, he had to get a treat to be motivated to do something. Give yourself a treat. If you knew that you were going to go buy um, a new, like, you, you know, you need a new dress. Well, now you can buy a slightly nicer dress if you get the thing done, or 
you really wanted that pair of hiking poles. Well, you can get that if you do this thing. And you might have you might have bought it for yourself anyway, but this gives you a little bit more incentive and like kind of girl maths your way into making it business math too, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, this is how I handle my weight loss goals. Never thought about applying it to financial goals. All goals are the same, guys. Like this is the thing. Any goal you have um, is the same or can be treated the same way. You can always reverse engineer a goal. You can always like figure out how to get to it. I find using math and analytics makes it so much easier to like actually, this is the, I'm such a control freak. So it makes me feel in control of it. It makes me feel like, okay, I've got a handle on how this is happening. I'm not just going, I hope I make money because that's great, but it's not actionable. And we can't, first of all, we can't define what that means. How much money do we want to make? what's happening. Um, but we also can't then set ourselves up to do it. We've just kind of been like, I hope this works. That's not how things work. We need to be very concrete with it. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Tuga, Tuga, I'm not sure I pronounced your name. I'm sorry. Um, do you think an affiliate program for adventure and glamorous small group tra travel led by a tour leader offering 10% commission with a 90 day cookie duration would appeal to travel bloggers? Yeah, <laughs> hundred percent. That sounds really cool. Um, the trips range from one to 3000 euros. Yeah, I think that'd be great. I mean, um, Contiki does something like that, not like glamorous group. It's just group travel. And I think, oh God, what is their commission? I don't remember their commission, but they do really well because they convert well. Um, but I've seen a lot of people, people selling their own tours, doing their own trip itineraries. Uh, Trova trips are a big thing where people will like lead a tour for their people. Um, and then Trova like takes a cut of that. So something like this, like small group travel is a thing. And as long as you find the right people, that would do well. Uh, do you think the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss is achievable? I have not. So I've heard people mentioning this and I haven't actually read it. So I don't know all the details. Depends on your niche, depends on what you're doing. I think definitely it could be. Um, I've not done that. <laughs> um, that's not something I have attempted, nor do I think I'd want to. I, I really like this. This is like, people always ask, what would you be doing if like you, if you had like all the money you needed, you didn't need more money, I would be doing this. This is like my favorite thing. Um, I love blogging. I love writing. That's why I want to get back to doing more of it. Um, I love SEO. I love AI. I get to do all the fun stuff, which is the great part. So I wouldn't want to only do it four hours a week. I, I, I want to do it this much. <laughs> um, I think some people do. It just depends. Uh, how long have you done this? I don't know if you mean this specific strategy or blogging. I've been blogging. I started my blog in 2014 for a group project in university. My mom named it. Um, I didn't buy the domain though yet. I bought the domain in... When did I go to Europe? 2017, I went to Europe. So I bought it when I came back in 2018. And that's when I like fully started. It was 2018. Um, so it's kind of weird because I, I had it and I had a few posts randomly. But I at that point, I was like, I'm going to publish every Monday. Why did I decide Monday was the day? But I published every Monday. Uh, then I moved to New Zealand, got a job. So it became every other Monday because I had to work. Um, and I was traveling for all the time and very broke. Um, but I was still spending like 120 hours a week on it, uh, which is why I could only publish every other week. Because I was doing those stupid Facebook comment swap things. Don't do those. It's terrible. How much do you spend in order to have 100K a month? What's your net income from that month? Uh, that month, I have the exact uh, breakdown of how much I earned on She Knows SEO. If you search 110K, it'll come up. Um, it's a great question because for that month, I was doing a bunch of experiments. So <laughs> I spent more than I needed to. Um, I had, so I have some writers. They did not contribute to that month at all, to be fair. Um, I have my editor. I have... I don't know if I'd hired my VA yet at that point. I'm not sure. I don't remember if I had the VA yet. I had one VA, but it was like post uploads, not. So I don't actually remember the exact amount or the exact breakdown. Um, I have it somewhere in my records. I, I think I put it in that post. It was under, it was definitely under 15K. That would have been like the highest end if I bought the $6,500 backlinks that month, but I think I bought them earlier. So I think it was more like, no, you know what? It was 15 K because that included my travel and living expenses for that month. Cause I, I also bought, um, I 
booked like a luxury getaway for a week for me and my dog. Um, and I put the down payment on my Alaska cruise. So it was 15 K that was my total living expenses and business expenses for that month. And the rest was all, um, it was 113 K it dropped to 111 K in the end from affiliates. I think that's right. It's in the post. I, I put the final number in the post. Um, yeah, but then the rest was just like I, I bundle most of my living expenses into business because all the travel stuff at that time I was like traveling full time. So all of my expenses became work except for food basically. So that was the breakdown. I'm doing that off the top of my head though. So there might be a small discrepancy, but you'll find the final number would be on the site. And I never let myself spend more than 15 K a month on everything combined, um, like life and business. I think it, I just don't know how to spend more than that as a person. I wouldn't understand. Um, usually it's, yeah, usually it's under 8k but i want to treat my mom to an alaska cruise um there's a book called that yeah get rich lucky bitch she also has um uh just lucky bitch is the other one there's you're a badass at making money there's a lot of really funny names for books i really like them uh da, da, da. affiliate income or display ads monetization or something else which is best that really depends on you. Affiliates are the fastest way to make money because you don't need to have a certain traffic level yet, um, but you need to have trust from your community. Ads are my favorite way, uh, other than courses. I really like courses because I've learned I'm very good at them. I didn't think I ever would be, but I really like teaching, um, which is funny because everyone growing up told me I'd be a very bad teacher. <laughs> so I hope that's not true. I really like doing it. I, I, people tell me it's not. So I hope it's, I really hope it's not, <laughs> but ads are passive. And I really like that. So for me, ads are easier and you don't have to worry about them as much. You kind of set them and forget them where like affiliates, like with the whole Amazon thing, we now have to figure out. What makes Ad Thrive better than Mediavine? I have a whole video on that, Victoria, on this channel. Um, go watch that. But for me, I made more money. It was easier and I really like them. And you can get second sites in at 30K page views. Um, my favorite motto, bigger dummies than me have done this. So it comes from uh, Georgia from My Favorite Murder. It's a podcast. Her grandma used to say it. She was like, bigger dummies than you. And then I just co-opted it. So it's not mine, but I, I love it. Uh, Chris asks, I visited 29 countries. How should I organize it for topical relevance? What would you recommend? I noticed Nomadic Matt is sort of everywhere. Don't take his approach. Do not follow Nomadic Matt. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, like he he is fine because he started in 2000. We're going to go over, guys. Don't worry. I'm going to answer all the questions. I don't know how to end these things. I like to answer everyone's question. I will stay. So just to be clear. Um, yeah, don't follow him. He started in 2008 and he built community first and SEO was easier back then. So he has a very different situation than we have. Um, I would not copy him. In fact, in, I have a few students who took one of his courses and he says, don't do SEO. Um, I know for a fact he has someone he hired for SEO. So like he he confuses people a little bit and he confuses me. I think his site is great. He is the one that got me into solo travel when I first started. Um, his like $50 a day book is like what I took with me when I moved to Europe with $3,000 in my pocket for a year and had to figure out life. Um, so like, I do like him. I just don't think his strategy works for new bloggers. Um, what I would do is figure out something that is a connection between all those countries, a travel style, something that like, um, something that connects all those things. So for example, like my main site, I talk about countries all over the world, but it's a travel style. So like every country you go to, you're going to in the same method. It'd be like dog travel. You could talk about the whole world when you're traveling with a dog, as long as it all connects to the dog. Like you have to have the dog everywhere sort of a thing. Um, then I would write at least in my opinion, 20 posts per country um, or city if it's a major city to like have some topical authority there and to answer all the questions. So the way that I think about it when I'm writing about a location is like, am I answering every question? I wanna help someone plan their trip. So I would think, okay, let's, I always use Rome as my example for some reason, um, but let's say Rome. So if you're gonna write one of these 29 places is Rome. I know you said countries, Italy will be the country, but we're gonna talk about Rome, the city. So if you have um, the, sorry, chat keeps moving and ADHD, I can't focus. <laughs> so. Um, Okay, so you have Rome and that's gonna be your city. I start with, how would I have a conversation to somebody about Rome? How would I start getting them to want to go there? Fun facts about Rome, maybe where is Rome in the world? Um, best time to visit Rome. We're gonna start with a general information. And then we're gonna get more specific to the point where you're gonna be like, okay, here are the best restaurants. And oh my God, you can't miss this tour. Oh my God, you need to stay in these places. And like, oh, well, you, you don't want a car. So here's how you get around without a car. Cause like, 
do not don't drive in Rome. That would be terrifying. I could never imagine driving in Rome. I lived in Italy. Don't recommend <laughs> driving anywhere in Italy is insane. So you're going to start breaking it down that way. And ultimately you want to have a collection of posts that is kind of almost like a guidebook. And this works for any niche. So same with SEO. I was doing kind of a spray and pray approach to She Knows SEO for a while. And I'm getting better right now about like actually writing these posts for it and being more concrete about like, okay, 20 posts on chat GPT. What is it? How to use it? Best prompts for a variety of different types of circumstances. It versus other things. Can I do this? All those sorts of questions. We're going to create this topic cluster. So we're answering everything. Wow, it just got very bright. <laughs> so um, so that we, yeah, we're providing the most information. So it'd be that sort of a thing. And so in the case of a travel style, like if it was like your whole site is a travel with dog site, you would be like dog-friendly restaurants in Rome. Um, dog-friendly tours, dog-friendly hotels, getting around with a dog, how to bring a dog to Rome, all those things, as well as the general travel stuff, but then it all connects. And then it connects to your general dog travel things. And it's all this web through your site. I can't go into like a ton of detail here because obviously I need to try and keep moving with more questions, but it's all on the roadmap. Um, but yeah, essentially we're just trying to like create a web and tell a story and think of it like from the beginning of a customer journey to the end. And that's part of how you build the funnel through your site as well. I hope that answered it. I know I kind of went all over. And Chris, I don't know what your uh, through line would be. So you would need to think of that. If there's no through line that's general travel, that's harder. I don't really know any general travel sites that succeed that aren't like Pinterest or Instagram based. Um, in recent years, there's always some sort of through line. So like sustainable travel, even if like not every post is about sustainable travel, you just need to like kind of connect it. You know what I mean? I hope that was clear. Uh how do you prioritize what to work on new posts versus updating old posts? So that's a great question. Um, I'm getting too hot. One sec. <laughs> Problem with the heated blanket. Um, so to start, have you done an audit in the last six months of your content? If not, update first. Um, especially if you're like just starting to like do SEO, clean your house before you invite guests over. Spring clean and then be like, yeah, come on in, all this new traffic. You don't want to invite people over, but you have that like pile of garbage in the corner like right I, there's a reason my computer is facing this way um all the boxes from building furniture and like styrofoam and then where the body slammed into it is just spread across the floor over there i'm not having guests over right now if you want to have guests over you want to clean up or you want to hide that stuff in the attic or the closet which would be no indexing that way google just can't see it so they can't see the disaster zone you've hid it from them um, but if you've updated posts more regular or more recently, put it aside, just do new posts. So we kind of like, you want to, um, if, if you're always updating posts, you're never going to write new stuff. So we want to give ourselves kind of a time period. So I usually say like a month, get through it. Now, if you have like a thousand posts on your site, you probably need to hire someone to like keep updating stuff with you or to keep doing new stuff or get very, very fast. <laughs> it's just going to depend. Um, not every post will need to be updated every six months, but you just want to check in on it. Like, okay, you still there? You okay? You alive? And then you're going to move on to the next thing. Okay. Uh, After setting up WordPress, does your SEO roadmap course cover everything needed to start a blog step-by-step? Step? Yep. And I am adding to it. So can you stop kicking the table, please? <laughs> Sorry, Theo is like rolling around in the sleep. Um, yeah, it covers all the stuff you're going to need to go from basically like, okay, I want to start a blog. Now what? All the way to I'm making more money than Nina, which is the goal. I want you all to make way more money than me. Uh, do you mentor slash offer advising calls? And if so, what cost? Jesus Christ, that is so bright. Um, I need to get some blackout curtains for the main floor. <laughs> um, I do coaching once in a while. Um, it is not open right now. When I open it, it's to my email list. So the best way to do it is to join my email list. And I don't know the exact cost because I have to figure out what my new package is going to be. I've been like fine tuning it this year. So I think I know what it'll kind of stay as, but yeah, it opens infrequently because I like to spend my time testing and writing rather than what are you doing? staring at the sticky notes. Um, so uh, I'm not always just teaching. I'd rather, I want to like stay on top of things basically. So they're not open right now. They won't open again until the new year. Um, but yeah, if you get on my email list, you'll find out about that. Now I do have my blog audits open and I have decided I am going to be closing those um, at the end of January. So if you want to get a blog audit, those are available, um, but then I'm going to be 
closing those down because I just, they'll, they'll open once in a while, but I just can't do it all the time. Um, okay. How many articles do you publish on your sites per month? Do you have any others that write articles? So depends this year all over the place, very, very low numbers, to be honest. Um, I was traveling for most of the year. I drove across the country um, because I was supposed to move to Europe and that didn't happen. And then I got really depressed and then I just I had sold everything but my car. So Theo and I drove across Canada and the US. So I wasn't writing much, which kind of sucked. I really, the whole goal of quitting my job in January, because it's kind of weird to say I only quit the law firm job in January. I've only been doing this full time for like less than a year. Um, yeah, it it was a lot less this year. Usually uh, when I was doing like my big media vine push, it was 10 to 12 posts a month. Um, and then over the winter last year, it got up to like, I think I did 20 posts one month. Um, but some of that was like repurposing other stuff. Uh, but I use AI to write. I've, I've used AI since October of 2021. I was one of the first people using it um, and was heavily shamed for it, but it works and I love AI. So yeah. And then um, I hired 40 writers in January for a test. We are down to six and I am I'm just not a writer girl. I really like doing it myself um, with AI and yeah. So I do have some, um, we had some issues with the VA, so none of it got posted. So I'm just starting to post them. So uh, yeah, it's been a mess, but we're getting there. Uh, so kind of a weird answer, I know, but I don't have an exact answer. But when I was like blogging consistently more so, it was like 10 to 12 posts a month. And then I would do um, anywhere from two to 12 guest posts a month as well. Um, how many affiliate posts should you write for a travel blog? Completely depends on your goals. <laughs> um, the way that I do it is less like total numbers. I wouldn't want 100% of my content to be affiliate posts. So the way that I do it is when you're starting, um, no affiliate posts till you hit like at least a thousand page views a month, maybe even more, especially now with like the HCU and everything. Um, and then start like subbing them in. So like one a month, maybe or like basically like uh, 25% to 50% of your content then could be affiliates. Um, but it really depends. And then it depends on the quality of them as well. So like, uh, sometimes I'll write less because right now, like I'm targeting more, my goals are more based around, um, ad revenue right now, just cause I want to prove that I can do it to myself basically. And I keep seeing like people like Spencer Hawes of niche pursuits. Hayes. I always say people's last names and I've never learned how to say them. And I, I never learn like every time. Um, but he posted about like a $3,000 a day on Mediavine. And I was like, I want that. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm like really obsessed with ad rev right now. It's like, I am minorly competitive against myself. And I just want to prove that I can do it to myself basically. Um, so yeah, I'm focused on that right now. But ads would just vary based on, uh, or affiliates would vary based on how much you want to make um, based on where you're at and things like that. I basically focused on affiliate posts for about six months last year because I didn't have any. So I needed some and I already had like, I think 200 posts at that point. So I had some catching up to do. Um, yeah. Okay. Then we have for bloggers who have your courses, would you recommend starting with six months to 50 K or with the SEO roadmap? If you, so everything in the SEO roadmap, the six months of 50 K is like a beginner version of the SEO roadmap that only covers the start of traffic sort of to me, like, I know it's not technically a starter course, according to what I see everyone else selling a starter courses. But to me, that's my intro to SEO course. Um, so I would start with it, then do the roadmap, but the roadmap covers all the learnings in it. Yeah. Um, so like, I wouldn't buy both. If you have both, good. If you're in the 50K, you get a discount on the roadmap because it's the same learnings. Um, so yeah, hope that helps. Uh, how to avoid information overload. I don't get information overload that much. I think because like I got diagnosed with ADHD this year and it makes a lot of sense. So like, I love information. It just makes me excited. Um, so yeah, I guess I would say just write it all out and then figure out that's kind of how I sort my brain out as I put it on paper or on like Microsoft word or something or Google notes or Google docs or whatever, put it somewhere and then sort it out, like go through it. Um, you can even chat with chat GPT and be like, does this help? Is this working? Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. And then figure it out that way. Uh, talk it out. I do a lot of therapy. That's where I do most of my figuring things out. Although she keeps banning me from talking about work stuff. So like last year I got banned from talking about Google analytics and now I can't talk about chat GPT. And I'm like, but it's fun. And she's like, we need to deal with your issues. And I'm like, or we could not. So yeah. The four hour work week, work week book is outdated now. Uh, needs 
oh, better books out there now. That's good to know. Uh, Nina, if you have a self-improvement blog apart from Amazon, what affiliates do you recommend? That's a good question. Um, I don't know enough about the self-improvement niche. So you need to figure out, like, I guess it would depend on how you're doing it. I know Lasso and Authority Hacker on their websites, they have good lists of like what affiliates exist for it. The way that I do it is I look at my competitors. So if you go to a competitor site, who's another self-improvement blog, especially if they publish um, any income reports, so you know that they're making money or you know that they have like high traffic or something, um, go to them. And then I will look at their outgoing links. So links that they are linking to, not backlinks, links they're going out to. You can do that in Key Search or Ahrefs or SEM Rush or any of those things. I think even Similar Web does it. And it shows you what their most linked to domains are. And then you can figure out from that if it's like a certain, like let's say it was like a yoga mat company. Okay, well, if they're all linking to that, probably an affiliate. And then you could go sign up for that. So that's one way. Oh, Claire, you worked doing SEO for Nomadic Matt. That is very funny. Welcome. <laughs> um, Rajesh, if I do everything that you tell in your courses and on social media, will that be enough or do I need to follow someone else? I always think it's important to learn from a couple people to make sure it like works for you. So like test me first from my free stuff. That's why I put free stuff out there. I believe in the Costco free sample policy. But I've, I don't know if that's a thing. I've just made it up in my head. Hi, Bubba. Um, he likes Costco, I guess. <laughs> do you want to say hi to the people? Say hi, Theo. <laughs> no, you just want belly rubs. Um, so I believe in like test before you buy sort of a thing. Now, I don't know everything about everything. So I know what I know about what I do and how it's worked. So I would say that works. I do not teach on Google Discover. I don't teach on web stories. I don't really know that stuff. I don't teach on Pinterest. Um, yeah, so you would need more to learn those things. But what I do works for me and it makes me the money I make. So that that's what I teach. Um, and as I learn new things, I add it to the SEO roadmap. I've included some of like, I had a post take off on discover recently and I shared like all of my learnings about that in the roadmap. Um, but I'm not going to like, I don't plan to become a Google discover guru. It's not my thing. So yeah, I never want to say that you won't need anything ever again, because things change and you may have different interests, but, um, it is your like all access pass to my brain basically. Okay. Um, how many pillars, main topics would you suggest having on a site? So depends because in the travel world, you would have like pillars and destinations are kind of different things. Sometimes if it's like, okay, you have like a style of travel. If you walk in front of this camera, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you just need to be the center of attention at all times. Okay. You were crushing me. <laughs> Can I please have a little space? Just a little. Um, okay, how many pillars? Uh, yeah, so in travel, like if your style is a pillar, the destinations don't always count as pillars. Hi, I know. Um, so it'll vary a little bit. Typically, I say like in your menu, you have six things maximum. And so usually three of those things would be a pillar, um, but it depends. So like she knows SEO, I have AI, travel blogging, and SEO are my three like silo kind of things. And then pillars would be technically those, but they can vary a little bit. Like in travel, it might be like, okay, dog travel, but then there'd be the countries. And I don't necessarily count those as a full pillar because they're part of the dog travel. Um, but I work my way from one pillar to the next. So the way that I always talk about it is like when you were a kid and you had like I call them tip jars, but it was just like a money jar piggy bank you were saving up for stuff. You want to fill one at a time. Otherwise, if you're filling like all three, then it's going to take you three times as long. So if you get like $3 a week in allowance, because your parents are very nice to you, mine were not that nice, <laughs> then it's going to take you three times as long to save up if you're putting a dollar in each one. If you fill one at a time, you're going to get each of those things and then get to keep moving forward. So kind of, again, I'm impatient. I want gratification immediately. <laughs> so I want to like do the thing first. So rather than writing across pillars, I recommend writing one and then move on to the next. Um, how many words per post? Look at the top 10 and see what they're doing. Um, I do have a post explaining that a bit more on She Knows SEO. Can you chill out, Bubba? Um, okay, any suggestions for the fastest WordPress theme that is three? Uh, never use Elementor. Run from Elementor. Elementor is so bad. Use Gutenberg. Um, Cadence, and I'm just starting to test Generate Press on one of my sites. Both very good, both very speedy. I will have a video comparing the two coming out soon. Uh, maybe some calming tea could work for who, for what I'm behind now. I don't, I don't know what that was in reference to. Can you not burp into the microphone? Jesus. 
Um, do you have a VA? Yes, um, I have two. I have my customer service VA who like, she doesn't just do customer service. She's a tech VA. She's amazing. Alex, love her. You guys have probably talked to her if you've uh, messaged support at sheknowsseo.co. Um, and then I have my like WordPress VA who just does uploads for my four other sites. So Alex does like she knows SEO. And then Ella does like my other four sites. Um, tips for bringing people in. I am not great at that. I've just learned. The number one thing is if someone can recommend someone to you, that is much nicer. Um, it's just easier that way. Uh, otherwise, look for people who are doing a similar thing to you, unless you're prepared to train. Then when you hire someone, have SOPs. So that's standard operating procedures that you've like record some Loom videos of how to do stuff, have checklists. Um, then it's you can track what they're doing a little bit easier. Like you have like do these things, um, but also you can reuse it in the future. So that helps. Um, yeah, I go onto it more in the roadmap because there's a bunch of different things. And then I'm not great at hiring. So what I did is I would do like uh, a an interview. I would do like a little mini test. That way, like I test to make sure they can do the thing um, or like listen to instructions for something. And then, yeah, from there, you just open communication. Do you think Google hates all affiliate blogs irrelevant of their quality self-written? If yes, why and how to handle it? Um, right now, some things, yes. Um, a lot of travel affiliates have dropped off because of it, but depends. So that would be why um, use the informational ones, get it to like the informational, move them through your site yourself so that you're still making that money, even if those other posts aren't ranking. So that would be a thing. You can also promote it via email. Um, email marketing is so good for affiliates uh, and Facebook groups as well, things like that. Basically build the community and then who cares if Google likes it or not um, because you can promote it to your community. So informational first and then build the community, help people then sell. How many hours do you work on your business when you had a full-time job and how many hours a week do you do now that you quit your job? I don't track it now, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. I work I don't, even, I don't work full days. Like it's very sporadic because I've not been well. Um, so recently, sometimes it has been closer to a four hour work week because I couldn't walk for two weeks. Um, things got really bad. Um, it was actually closer to a month, but I pushed myself a bit. Um, so I wasn't really working and I was mostly, um, yeah, there were a couple psych ward visits and suicide watches. So I haven't been working a ton. Um, so I don't know the exact hours now. That was really dark, sorry. Um, when I worked with my business, uh, it varied sometimes 20, sometimes 60, just depended on the month. I don't track hours. I track the things that I'm doing. I think that's the important part is like, I can write really quickly. I can do keyword research really quickly. It doesn't take me a long time to do that. Um, so it's more about my like output and the quantity or the quality rather than like the quantity of hours I'm spending on it. I don't care as much. Um, yeah. So I don't know exactly. Uh, when I did Facebook group swaps, I know it was 120 hours because I was mad about it being 120 hours. <laughs> and then uh, there were definitely times there where it was like when I was doing some some of the biggest pushes for the six months to my 50K sessions where I grew to like 50K sessions in six months. Um, sometimes there, I think there was definitely a week or two where it was like 60 to 80 hours uh, and I just didn't sleep because, yeah. So not great. I don't recommend it for your health. Um, probably don't do it that way. But I was also, to be fair, I was working four jobs. I was not working one job. I was working a lot of things. Um, so I was not taking care of myself anyway. <laughs> okay. How do you determine keyword difficulty? What tools do you use? And when is something too difficult to rank for? Key search. I have a great um, tutorial on key search on this site or on this channel. And I'm also going to be doing a couple like shorter ones. That way you don't have to watch the full hour if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, key search, uh, their difficulty level. Then I look at topical authority of my competitor, their backlink profile, my topical authority, um, and the quality of their answers to the questions. Uh, how do you learn the tech side of email marketing funnels, selling digital products? I just tested stuff until it broke and then fixed it. <laughs> that was mostly it. Um, I, I self-teach a lot of stuff to myself because I like to just break stuff and then try again. Like I taught myself how to code a plugin. Um, just did it because <laughs> um, why not? So yeah, I just try stuff and then see what happens uh, and then break it a hundred times. And then it works one time. And then we just keep going with that one time after. What platforms to use for email selling, hosting products? Is there a course you recommend for this? So I teach it in the roadmap, but um, I learned everything I know about selling courses from Elizabeth Goddard. Um, so I actually have a really cool thing coming out with her in a week, exactly a week. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be super exciting. Um, and yeah, I think I'm allowed to say what it is. I don't know. So it's, it's a bundle, but I'm not gonna say more than that. Um, but it's coming out in a week and you'll be able to 
get some stuff, free stuff from her so you can learn from her. Um, you're going to fall off this couch. <laughs> um, then for email, I use ConvertKit and MailerLite. So I just transferred to ConvertKit on one site to test it. I think both are pretty similar. Like I did an interview with Liz Wilcox. Uh, it's on this channel as well that you can see. Um, and she said, she's like, it doesn't really, there's not a massive difference between them. It's more about what works for you and what you understand. I don't like ConvertKit's automation system. It works really well. I can't do it, but my VA is really good at it. So luckily Alex, like Alex has saved my freaking life so many times with this stuff. I'm like, do it please. And then she makes it work, which is amazing. So um, that works well. I like MailerLite because it's free to your first 500 people. Now it used to be a thousand. I kind of hate that they removed it, but you also get like funnels and automations in that free system when you're starting, which is great. Um, then I sell everything on Thrivecart. Uh, it is, you're going to knock everything off. Stop it. <laughs> Um, so I sell everything on Thrivecart because it's a one-time fee and then you never pay it again, which is nice. Um, and they're raising the price soon. So get it before price raises. Um, also, if you buy it with my affiliate link, you get hundred dollars of Nina notes, which are credit to my business. So you can get hundred dollars off anything I sell, including coaching and audits. You are ridiculous. Um, you said we get a discount on the roadmap course if we're already part of the six months of 50K. Yes, it's in the six months of 50K lesson. I think it's at the bottom of it um, where it says like, if you want to get the roadmap, I think, I don't remember the exact amount, but you get a discount because I've changed it a bunch of times, kept increasing it. So I don't remember what's at anymore. Hi, Theo. Theo says hi. <laughs> um, yeah, he is sweetie. I just shouted Theo and scared the crap out of my dog. <laughs> Jesus, Theo, I love everyone's paying attention to you. You love that. Yeah. Um, if my blog is currently on Elementor, should I switch over ASAP? Okay, I can hold you like a baby, but I need to, uh, you not to lay on my ribs. Thank you. Um, I would say it depends on where you're at. I would try to change it as soon as possible, to be honest. Um, I, it's very slow. It's, it's not good. And the longer you wait, the more posts you add, the harder it is to change. You want to just change it as soon as possible. So I would say, switch soon. Yeah. As much as you can in that weird week between Christmas and new year's where like nothing really happens, maybe do it then or do it now. I would do it now, but I understand life gets in the way. Um, I use an elementary template for my homepage and about page. Everything else is Gutenberg. Now it still slows down the whole site. It'll still run everywhere. It's not great. Um, I don't recommend it. I know some people do, but I've just run it, You can do so much with cadence. It can look exactly the same, if not better. Um, generate press it can if you pay for the premium from what I've seen it is I don't love the customization so far but I'm still new to it to be fair okay you are gonna absolutely wreck things calm down um so yeah I would change it how do you feel about Google getting rid of third-party cookies worried I have too much anxiety around daily life I don't worry about things that haven't happened yet <laughs> it's just not worth it everyone was so worried about it and then the HCU hit and everyone was like oh my god I didn't know to expect this no, save your worrying for what actually happens. It's easier to save it for that. Um, same with SGE, I don't know. Like um, I can't predict what's gonna happen. It seems like with Google Discover so far, Google just introduced the following function on Google Discover. And my theory is that is their way of like basically having people signed in so that they can collect cookies, which I think is what's gonna happen. Um, I think it's fine. It, and if it changes everywhere, it's going to be the same for all of us. Um, it's also Chrome is like one of the only platforms to still have them anyway. I think it might be the only browser to still have them. So it already changed everywhere else already. Um, I wish you were my neighbor. Aw, I don't know that I'm a great neighbor. <laughs> Theo and I just randomly like he's right now he's learning how to roll over. And that usually means a lot of like slamming his body down because he cannot lie down in a normal fashion when he's like when treats are involved. He's like, I'm down. So I think we annoy the neighbors. Um, yeah, look at key search is great. I have a 20% off coupon code that you can use as well. If you want to, um, do you think I need to follow and buy other courses if I follow you or do everything in your courses and suggest by you? I can't answer that to some extent. I mean, you, you have to figure out who you learn best from, um, personally, like I follow a lot of people. Um, I learn from a lot of people. I think it's good to have differing opinions. Um, I don't buy other courses though anymore. Cause I want to try and make sure that I'm not like, I don't want to accidentally copy anyone or anything. So yeah, I try not to cross those lines. So I don't compare. Um, you'd have to figure that out for yourself a bit. How many photos per 1000 words would you suggest? Completely depends on the post. Um, I really don't like people tried to push me into a corner for a while of like how many keywords per thousand words. I now refuse to say, like, I don't think there's a strict number. I think it a hundred percent depends on the post and on the niche hundred percent. 
what apps do you use for your blog off page and on page SEO? Um, my brain, <laughs> I use key search. Um, that is basically the only dedicated thing I use. I use rank math, but I completely ignore it. Um, I just use it to put the keyword in so that like my VA knows what we're targeting. That's about it. Um, I've like on and off used neuron writer and rank IQ and, um, Raptive has one built in that's like from SEM rush. I don't think it's a necessity. Like I use it when I want to, but I do not think it's a necessity. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like, I use a lot of things mostly to test them. And I just don't think you, like, I think the one thing you actually need is keyword research. And then like an SEO tool is fine to just like track it on your site. Um, but you can kind of ignore their whole like green list or like yellow, red, or red, yellow, green, or whatever. I kind of ignore that. Um, yeah. I, other, there's other tools I use that I guess, like I use link whisper for internal linking. We'll always use that. I use query hunter to, um, help at a page level, see what, uh, secondary keywords maybe I missed or things I need to optimize for or fix up a bit. Um, I think other ones can't think off the top of my head. I have like a whole list of plugins um, on she knows SEO that lists like all the ones that I use. Um, and then the ones that I hate, the ones that I don't recommend. Uh, but I am working on a resources page that'll have like exactly what I use and then like wish list stuff. It's like if you can, it's nice. Um, but it's not done yet. Okay. Uh Elizabeth Goddard. Yes, that's exactly her name. Um, she has stuff starting at nine dollars. So like you don't have to spend a million dollars to learn from her. She's really, really great. Um, Theo is beautiful. Yes, he is. He is the sweetest. Uh, what search engine do you suggest to use and not Google as it is making its own rules? I, I, I do Google. <laughs> um, I don't know. I use Google. So thoughts on surfer. Um, I have videos on surfer SEO. I, I think it's too expensive for what it does. It is exactly the same basically as uh, I did like a comparison of like seven content optimizers. You can find that video where I literally put the same keyword into all of them they do the same thing. Neuron Writer is the cheapest, so I would pick Neuron Writer. Um, and I don't like their AI. I did a bunch of reviews of that as well that were quite extensive. I do not like their one-click AI. Dude, <laughs> um, any good resource to, have to learn how to do keyword research? My SEO roadmap course or my six months to 50K course, um, but also in my free key search walkthrough, I, I start walking you through it. What is happening? Why is your hand raised? Why? Okay, I think Theo's had enough. So we have five more minutes if anyone has more questions and then we'll head off. Do not hit me in the face, please. <laughs> now you go to hit me in the face. Um, I know we went a little bit long, so I hope this was helpful. I know we kind of turned it into a and a at the end, but the thing I want everyone to take away from this is that you have your year goal. And even if you don't have it yet, set it and make sure it makes you a little bit uncomfortable. If it's like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to hit that. You need it to be higher. hundred percent. You need it to be higher. Um, then set your monthly goals. And if you hit them, like, especially if you find in the beginning of the month, you're hitting it every single, like every single month, you're like, oh, I hit it in the first week or something. You need to like triple that. Then <laughs> you need it to be a higher goal. Um, and then for the things you need to accomplish, you need to figure out number one, what to do and how to make time to do it. If it's, completely like impossible for you to do that much stuff, then you need to adjust things. Maybe outsource, maybe do less, maybe, um, I don't know. Yeah. Talk your partner into helping you with it. <laughs> Try to make your dog sentient so that they write posts because they're just needing so much attention. Jesus. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, those are kind of my tips with this. You can definitely post in my Facebook group um, or in the comments of this, if you want to hold yourself more accountable and have to speak your goals into existence, you are being a nut job. Okay, go over there. <laughs> um, so yeah, but this is how I do my business planning um, without a dog usually draped. That's not true. Usually he is draped across me to some extent. So yeah, I hope this helped everybody and you feel a bit more in control of your goals, um, but you should still feel a little bit uncomfortable. You should feel like a little uncomfortable that you have to push yourself to read them because that's the way that we grow and that's the way we push ourselves. Uh, Neuron Writers on AppSumo. Yep. That's where I got it. Uh, you mentioned Key Search. Yeah. Key Search is my favorite. It's a uh, hundred dollars $110 a year. Um, I used it before I ever used Ahrefs or SEMrush. It is the only thing I used when I got into, um, into Mediavine. I didn't use any other tools, didn't have anything else. Like I used Link Whisper Query Hunter and, um, Jesus, Theo, um, <laughs> and key, and key search, mostly key search. Um, so that would be, to me, that is the essential. Ahrefs is fine, but not exciting. And I hate SEMrush. I'm not a big fan. 
it just doesn't like the UX isn't for me. I'm so glad you all came. Um, yeah, I'm so glad everyone's here. Do you talk about building community in your roadmap? That is kind of like the through line of the roadmap is like helping people and connecting with your community. Um, yeah, so I would say yes, but I don't know if I have a, I don't remember, there's so many lessons now. I don't know if there's a strict individual lesson, but um, anytime people request things, I will build in a lesson. So feel free to request it in the group if you join. Yay, I'm so glad everyone's here. Um, I hope everyone feels very confident now and excited and empowered. Um, I'm so glad everyone had a good time. And yeah, um, I would also say like, don't forget to build in time for learning when like someone just noted they bought a couple of my things. Um, set times that you can learn. I like to set, like they say that Oprah does this too, like an hour a day when it's like learning time. So I will, I used to build that into my walks with Theo. I can't walk as much anymore. So it's harder now. Um, so I will do a little bit less of it, or I'll try to do it around the house, but I'll be like, okay, hey, for an hour a day or whatever per week, um, I'm going to have some learning time. And I think that's important. So good to schedule it. Okay. And I get going because Theo might need a walk. Maybe that's why he's being crazy, but he has covered me in dog for now. Um, so thank you all for joining us. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you ever have more questions, um, my comments are open on YouTube, um, on my site on shenosseo.co um, and my public Facebook group, uh, the SEO, SEO for travel bloggers, which is the best place to ask questions because then everyone gets to learn together. And I really like to like a lot of people have the same question. There's no dumb questions, but I really want to make sure that um, everyone gets the answer. Okay. See you guys soon. Bye.